Well, good morning. It is um, Wednesday, and uh, it's uh, day five of my trip. And it is a chilly morning, very chilly morning. Oh my God. I don't know what the temperature is out there. Um, I don't have one of those uh, outside temperature gauges here in the van. This is our old van. I used to have something here on the window, but that broke. Um, so I have no idea. I could, I could use my phone, but hey. Uh, it's just nippy. There's bits of frost on the ground. Um, but yeah, what a great, uh, what a what a great great evening. Uh, I stayed in an air in a place called uh, Benwilsu Aisne or Bernusu Aisne, A I S N E, Aisne, Aisne. I don't know. Um, and it was on park for night and the original location I went to was actually further down in the village and it was all cordoned off and everything and I was like oh no it was all closed I was like oh, this is not right so I turned around and I thought right I'm just going to find uh, a car park or something and um, this woman flagged me down and in French she was sort of saying, oh, are you looking for a place to park? And I went, yes, to sleep, like that. Yes. Oh, there's the, an air. Follow me, she says, as she gets in her car. And she then drove me to the upper part of the village, and there's this enormous air that's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spaces. And I'm the only person here. And it was five euros. So that was brilliant. Um, surrounded by trees. There is a road that goes by, but it's only like a small road. And because we're up on a bit of a plateau, the road kind of dips down. So you don't hear the traffic so much. But during the night, I didn't, I think I only heard one car. Um, in fact, I got woken up by the cows this morning. I took some pictures of the cow cows. Uh, it was those guys that woke me up this morning. <laughs> But other than that, a very nice, peaceful, quiet night. Um, yeah, I'll talk about this another time, but it's, yeah, this is just brilliant. Hopefully you can hear me. I've got the engine going because it's a, a something rattling. I don't know what it is. See that? <gasps> oh, what is it? Anyway, um, so yesterday, what a day yesterday. Um, the place that I stayed at in Braisu Som was ahead of the game, so I then had to kind of backtrack to catch up on a few places. Um, so by the time I got to where I could then continue from where I'd stayed, I'd taken in nine points of interest so there was a lot to kind of go back and cover but it's to be expected it's the, the Somme there's a lot of stuff there bearing in mind that, that some of the hardest battles and fighting was taking place around the Somme so there's a lot of stuff there many many lives lost it's staggering how many people died um, but anyway, the first place I went to, I went to this uh, German cemetery in the morning. And as I've said before in the past with these German cemeteries, I just love them. They're just... The Commonwealth ones are brilliant because of the, the, the stone and everything. And they're, they're almost... Because it's almost white and you see them for miles sometimes if they're on the hillside or what have not. And there's something about the way... Yeah, it's almost like praising what was going on, whereas the the German ones were a lot more dark and sinister and a lot more sombre. It's just black crosses, very, very simple black crosses. Um, and these kind of abstract crosses and, and then the, the, the uh, 
big slabs of, of um, granite or whatever it is with all the names embossed and relieved on top where the mass uh, burials are and things like that and uh, but they are incredibly beautiful at the same time um, yeah I don't know which ones are my favourite I mean favourite symmetry god what's that all about um, but you know what I mean um, there's something about the way they look um, yeah I don't know what it is um, sorry I've got to find this rattling because it's really fucking me off ah they got it um from there I went to a little village called Martin Puch or Martin Pooch <laughs> um, and there was like a, a small monument that I got there and their little villages are just fantastic you, you just see them and then you, before you know it you're out of them they're, they're only small um, kind of like uh, hamlets and um, yeah, with farms and, and what have not but very pretty little villages um, and then I made a, a beeline for a place called Pozieres and up on the hill there on the ridge uh, there's a um, a monument for Australians um, called the Windmill and it's a very famous place and it was there's nothing there it's literally just a, a, a few lumps where the windmill once stood but it was a very strategic uh, place that was captured and uh, again thousands died <laughs> in trying to do so uh, but it was a very um, yeah, strategic point to get um, the Germans had it then I think the Allies had it I think the Germans may have got it back again etc and you find that a lot with these places sometimes they, they change hands quite a few times um, but that was um, quite interesting and behind it there was a monument for the animals which I thought was really nice because you don't see that anywhere <laughs> and then suddenly there's this monument um, for the animals of the First World War and then across the road you've got a tank monument as well um, so there's yeah the three kind of monuments all like close together um, intersected by a really busy road <coughs> what's quite interesting as well where the um, windmill monument is you can walk around and then there are just sort of these old crosses and benches in, in the fields where uh, remains have been laid to rest and I, I, I was looking on the ground it's like, this is interesting because there was like these little grass strips sort of thing and, and then I was looking at this sign and what they'd done they'd cut out in the grass the line of the trench the German trench that surrounded the windmill um, so you you know and, and all these trenches you go for a bit then you turn right then you go for a bit then you turn left and it's just like that it's just this um, yeah kind of network of, of, of passages and yeah you will walking basically on the surface of what used to be a trench it got me thinking because the trenches that I've seen thus far they're about six foot maybe a little bit more in places and I mean I've dug a hole once in my mum's garden for a fish pond it took me for fucking ever um, so I don't I can't comprehend how these trenches were dug in such a quick time um, and they were supported with timbers and planks and goodness knows what and there's must be hundreds of miles worth of trenches in this country in Belgium and, you know, and I mean exa prime example now I mean you, you know the war in Ukraine they're building trenches it's it just seems to be a, a thing trench warfare if you're trying to defend you need to build a trench how long does it take to build these trenches and these go on for 
hundreds of meters around particular areas and it it's fascinating and and to think of all that time it takes and there I was now all of that trench had been filled in <laughs> land had grown etc and yeah it was just flat grass yeah a lot of stuff on this trip gets me thinking but then that's that's how I am I'm I'm a curious bastard at the best of times and I do like to think a lot if I get I'll start to ponder start to scratch the old chin um, then you go through after that I went to Pozier's um, British Memorial which was really beautiful um, but the Sun was so bright and the, I, I don't know my camera very well I'm, I'm a bit of a technophobe with this thing so yeah trying to adjust the settings and everything so sometimes it really whites out it, it was so bright because it, it's all this white stone um, but it was a really beautiful uh, monument very different to to others that I'd seen with all these columns around the edge and everything it looked amazing and then I went to the Loch Nagar crater <clears throat> and that thing is something to be seen now I saw one other crater the one in Belgium which had been um, naturalized I guess into into a pond that it was very very beautiful whereas this one is just an enormous hole and yeah it's it's a big hole <laughs> um, I mean I knew it was big but when you go up to it bearing in mind that you're walking up to it and there's a cross and the cross must stand I don't know what four meters high something like that and then you look over the edge and you're like, oh my days. Um, I forget the actual measurements of this thing. Um, but yeah, it goes down a long old way and it spans. I was reading some of the, they've got all these plaques around the outside and uh, these boards and I was reading that there was a pilot who was flying over said that the debris from the blast uh, reached an altitude of 4,000 feet that's how big it was um, yeah it was a very big boom god and 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 just the feats of engineering of the 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 engineers the royal engineers and the tunneling and I mean the stuff that they did in order to do this was just ridiculous in these tiny tunnels I mean I I, I, I couldn't do it I couldn't do it um, the length a man will go to staggering and then after that I went to the Welsh Memorial the Welsh Memorial is beautiful it's in a very very beautiful um, kind of veil uh, with these woods at one end and, and across the um, is it the Mamet's Woods? I forget what it's called now um, and there is this this dragon beautiful brilliant bright red um, and you have to go down a really sort of uh, bumpy road Neo loved it, he was off-roading he was going wow dad this is just like being like Project Amber going down paths that I shouldn't but he don't speak like that I don't know I don't know what Neo's voice is it's well it's probably like Mr Anderson and you know it's kind of got a bit of American tins to it and maybe a bit of a Californian dwarf and sort of I don't know yeah anyway that's what he was saying to me and we went down and you go and then you climb up these steps and then there's this uh, memorial it's staggering it's really beautiful and in fact as I went down I had a bit of um, some elevenses and as I looked across at the wood which was the the place where the Welsh uh, were trying to capture you could see a Welsh flag just fluttering away in the in the woods um, which is quite quite interesting um, from there I then saw the flat iron Cops Cemetery, another uh, British cemetery, 
and ju it's literally just down the road you pass it in order to get to the Welsh one um, really pretty and you know you're just surrounded by this nature and you're listening to the birds and the woodpeckers and goodness knows what um, there was a, a hawk of some sort flying above as well so beautiful you know and, and it, it's sad in a way because you look at these things you see this beauty in front of you and hundreds thousands of innocent people as far as I'm concerned slaughtered and um and there they are laid to rest in, the, in that very area. And when you look at it now, you're thinking, what, 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 what's there to gain here? It's just beautiful countryside. And it was just all about gaining this line and trying to stop the enemy from coming further into your country. It's crazy. Then visited a little place called Comtal Maison. There's a nice little um, monument there of, um, I think, the Virgin Mary or, or something like that. Very beautiful. Um, and then I went to the monument Mamets. Or actually, is it Mamets where the angel or oh, the, the Virgin Mary was? I really don't know. You know. I've been writing this stuff down like t yesterday I wrote it as I went along so I thought it's really hard in the evening trying to remember because I'm doing all the downloading of the SD cards and charging and stuff and, and I wrote it and I didn't even write what it was because I've now got monument at my Met so maybe that was the one where the Virgin Mary was but either way it was very pretty and then I then go back through Braissou Somme, so where I stayed the night before, there's a, a monument there of a soldier on the plinth, and then carried on to a place called Capi. And I wanted to stop at Capi because at the top of Capi is, is uh, would have been a makeshift airfield, and it's where um, the Red Baron used to um, uh, take off from. I think it might have been the last place he took off from. Um, what, how many kills did he have? If something like, did he shoot down 40 Allied aircraft or something like that? Um, but he was obviously a hero in Germany. Um, and, you know, many stories and films, etc., have been uh, made about him. So, yeah, I, I just sort of saw that. Uh, and then I went to a place called La Montagne de Frise, and this is beautiful. It's just um, like a country park. Um, which has this commanding view over the, the valley of the Somme and you see the Somme and you see all the, the marshland and lakes and ponds etc and it's just gorgeous and the the actual ridge that it's on um, presumably would have had trenches and goodness knows and you can see how it would be a very good line of defence because it's up this kind of bank you're know, quite a high steep bank um, but it's just potmarked with divots and holes and craters and everything, you know, where it's just been absolutely peppered. Um, and, you know, now it's just these grassing undulations and trees and everything. And, oh, my God, what a beautiful, beautiful place. It was so nice up there. And there's got these little walking trails and everything. I, I, didn't, I didn't walk far, I only walked about half a kilometre or so. Um, and um, got the drone up and everything, which was, and got some really beautiful footage. But it was, yeah, it was, it was lovely. Um, there were red squirrels bouncing around all, all over and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, really, really nice place. And then from there, I then went to um, Peron, and in Peron, there's the Musée de la Grande Guerre. Um, and Peron was basically the end of um, stage two. No, stage three. <laughs> um, or leg three, rather. 
good afternoon and we've now come to the end of leg three so we're in a or just outside of a town called Peron and um, yeah that was the end of leg three and uh, we went into Histoire de la Grande Guerre it's like a, a museum that's um, a modern extension to this old castle in the town centre so I've just done that and I just took a little drive north of the town to a an Australian memorial and now um, I'm going to go to a place called Masha Lepo um, and that's the beginning of leg four um, and we may as well start it's nearly three o'clock I might I just spotted the Mackie D so I'm wondering whether to go to that get something for lunch then on the way out fingers crossed I'll go past some sort of supermarché and maybe get some fuel I'm about a quarter of a tank of fuel so this would be the first time I've filled up here in France because the last time was at Dover um, and yeah but what a day so far today pretty much I've toured the whole of the Somme and um, seen some incredible sights some amazing memorials um, and oh, I got to this place where you could see the, the Somme and the marshes and everything and it, this like nature reserve on this hill and it was pockmarked with um, uh, shell explosions and craters and stuff like that but it was absolutely beautiful I saw red squirrels running around um, it was beautiful there it's been a gorgeous day again absolutely stunning day so I'm trying to make the most of the daylight you see so that's why I think we'll start with leg four now so you yeah, have done 13 places so let's see how many more I can add I think I did 21 yesterday yeah yesterday was a mammoth day but it's great because um, it's about crikey it's about taking advantage of the light um, and the daylight hours um, the only problem is it gets into the evening I mean it's not getting dark until 9 I think and uh, by the time I get back to the van I'm absolutely cream crackered um, so yeah let's get lunch maybe get into a supermarket get stuff for the evening and for snacks for tomorrow uh, get some Scooby snacks and um, and then maybe fill up with fuel and then we're all good and then we start leg four and uh, we'll be getting to that point or getting to the halfway point by the end of tomorrow uh, halfway in legs but not necessarily in distance if you know what I mean leg three rather and um, yeah there's this castle and you go in and the, obviously what's the remains of the castle because that got blown to pieces um, but then they've built this modern extension and it's quite interesting it's a bit it's not as good as the uh, in Flanders Field Museum in Ypres I think that one I really liked just because of the contemporary nature of this whereas the Perron one is more has kind of got like more of an art gallery nature to it so some incredibly beautiful artifacts some very interesting artifacts to look but it's it's laid out more like an art gallery but still a very very interesting place to see um, yeah some some quite quite interesting things to, to look at um, and then out of there I then went up there's a, an Australian memorial um, which I was able to get some footage off and then managed to then uh, go to a, a Lidl and get some lunch and uh, stuff for tea and everything and then got on the road and um, started to put some some uh, miles in so from that point I now started leg four so I go to a place called Marshall Lapotte 
um, to start and uh, from there I go to Beffenkor where there's a, a German cemetery uh, and this German cemetery is literally across the road from the, the Somme really pretty in fact the only one that actually had it had a big uh, giant cross in the middle of it as well um, but again very simple very understated just black simple really I like that I really loved it and from there I then went to a place called Chateau du Ham and Chateau du Ham uh, was an old chateau that had been again <laughs> like everything completely blown to smithereens so it's just a relic of just I mean there's still like a big square shell um, and a apparently the it used to be a prison and it's where Napoleon uh, Bonaparte was kept uh, and he escaped from funny enough um, but yeah got some stuff of that and on the way out we got some fuel and um, and because I took a wrong turning, thank God I took a wrong... Oh, actually, as you come out of the station, you could out of the fuel station, you could only turn right and I needed to turn left. But because in doing so, I saw a sign for British and German cemetery. And I was like, oh. And I hadn't seen that on Google Maps. And I was like, what the foxtrot's going on here? So I um, went and saw that. And that was just... I'm so happy I saw that because... It's quite unique in that you had two cemeteries, a German and a British cemetery, next to each other. You, you walk through the German cemetery to get to the British cemetery. Um, and I just thought it was quite poignant, you know, that lay to rest were these souls of people who hated each other and were fighting against each other. And for what? Because they're all dead and now they're laying next to each other. Um, Wars, wars, bizarre. I tell you. Do you know? Here's my solution to wars. Okay, the people that want the wars, i.e., the people in charge, the prime ministers and everything, just fucking assassinate them. Just cut the head off the serpent, and then you don't need a war. It's these cunts back home that are given all the orders and everything like that. Oh, don't, don't get me onto this. Um, so that was good, and then from there I then drove through a place called Berlincor. So I'm now following uh, the, the Somme, and then I cross over the Somme, and I made my way to a place called Noyon. Um, and there's like a, a again, there's a French uh, necropolis and a British cemetery side by side. I couldn't get close enough to get to the cathedral. Uh, I wanted to get shots of the cathedral in the middle, but yeah, it's a it's a, a biggish city. Uh, or town, I don't know, I, I think I'd call it a city, well if it's got a cathedral and it was British we'd call it a city, um, but it's, um, yeah, and I couldn't get the van where I wanted it to and I couldn't find parking, the one place I was really struggling with parking, because I've been really lucky with parking, um, and then uh, from there I uh, drove through a little uh, town, village called Montmac. Uh, there's a little monument there and then from that point I then chose where I'm staying so I get onto what's, what's up in the uh, park for night and I look for places and I like to go to airs mainly because I like to pump money into the local communities because I think these are good and it's something that the UK needs to do you know, needs to get its f thumb out of its arse and do this um, and it's just brilliant. And even though I had to drive a little bit beyond, it was the same as yesterday. I drove beyond and then backtracked. I'm going to do the same today. I'm going to backtrack um, to um, what is it called now? Where are we going, Robert? We are going to wait, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. I want to call it this. It's called. <laughs> Uh, damn it, it's not there. Yeah, um, the Ch Chalaret de la Mestis or whatever. It's the it's the railway carriage where the signs the P Street is, etc. I think it was done in both wars actually. I think it was done First World and the Second World War. Um, which, um, 
so that's where we're going but I've only got a backtrack by nine kilometers so it's not far um, and unlike yesterday where I had to get nine things in before I could then continue my journey I've only got to do there's only like two points of interest and then I carry on and now I'm actually officially going east so I'm not heading south towards Paris I've noticed that the traffic started to build a lot more because I was getting closer to Paris yesterday whereas now I've turned and now I'm going due east and then we should reach hopefully by the end of today I should be the other side of Reims and I will then be officially uh, I would imagine over halfway uh, distance and most definitely legs because I'm on leg four now so uh, hopefully this is recorded this time I've been looking at the screen and it's telling me that it's recording because if not and I've got to do this again oh my god I'm going to absolutely explode See ya. Bye.